uh, Honorable Chair of PPD Board and Minister of Social Development of uh, South Africa, Honorable uh, Nindue Zulu. I also would like to start uh, by extending my best wishes for your speedy recovery and my appreciation to your strength to be with us today. Honorable Dr. Isatou Toure, Vice President of the Gambia. Honorable Ministers, uh, Mr. Peterson, Deputy Executive Director of the UNFPA. Dear Mr. Adnan uh, Aisa, Executive Director of the PPD. Distinguished members of the PPD Board, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. I'm really happy to add to this uh, policy dialogue on this high-level conference that brings health ministers, academics, civil society, and others engaged in the area of population and development. Ethiopia has been implementing the ICPD plan of action since 1994 and has achieved many successes in improving the lives of women and, women and girls. The, life, the plan of action was a key ingredient in our policy formulation, programming, development of appropriate legal frameworks and allocation of uh, the needed resources. The country's development bl blueprint currently, our 10-year uh, development and prosperity plan, mainstreams population issues and gives due emphasis to creating a conducive environment for the fast growing working age population to actively participate in the country's development process. National and sectoral programs and plans have also been put in place to address the various dimensions of the population and development nexus, addressing poverty, gender, use, access to health and reproductive services, family planning and education to mention a few. Post Nairobi summit, the country has drafted its own reproductive health strategic plan for the year 2021 to 2026 and took the three zeros as a foundation to the strategy. I would like to talk about uh, the status of the three zeros uh, in Ethiopia. On the zero unmet need for family planning, Ethiopia has expanded access and quality of family planning services over the past two decades. The number of facilities providing those services have increased by fourfold and number of providers and training also increased. And this has resulted in increased of, increase of contraceptive prevalence rate more than sixfold in the past two decades from 6% only to, in 2000 to 41% in 2019. The proportion of couples using long acting family planning also has increased from nearly 0% to the current 25%. And immediate postpartum planning, planning is also progressing, uh, showing progress of, uh, to about 8% in a short time. And to expand the choice of contraception methods, uh, self-injectable depot is also being piloted. And government is also increasing allocation of resources to complement other funds to purchase contraceptive commodities and reduce stockout. However, even though this, there is such progress in achieving this unmet need, there is still significant challenge with a high unmet need of 22%, low demand of contraception still, as particularly in some populations like the pastoralist communities, and lack of adequate and sustainable financing for, for curing commodities. Uh, particularly the hormonal implants due to their high cost. And we are also seeing an inadequate quality of counseling, which all need to be addressed. On zero preventable maternal deaths and maternal morbidities, such as obstetric fistulas, there is significant progress with the UN estimate showing mortality has decreased from 676, uh, 100,000 in 2011 to 401. But we can see that though it has reduced when we see the absolute numbers, it's really very high. It's about 14,000 per year, making us one of the three countries in the world that have more than 10,000 maternal days. And during this time, skilled attendance has increased from 10% to 50% with improved antenatal care quality. And with maternal mortality as well, unfortunately, we are still unable to bring significant reduction in neonatal mortality, despite the increasing facility delivery, which is now a big focus area for our ministry. The legal framework has also expanded to provide wide range of uh, indication for accessing safe abortion care. So following task shifting with this uh, improvement, the number of uh, the cause of maternal deaths from unsafe abortion has reduced from 32% to less than 5% currently. On zero sexual and gender-based violence, including zero child, early and forced marriage, as well as zero female genital mutilation, there has been progress in reducing adolescent pregnancy and female genital mutilation, but huge challenge still remains. 
although the legal age of marriage is 18 years for Ethiopia, 14.1% of girls uh, 20 to 24 are married actually by age of 15 and 40% by age of 18. And Ethiopia is a home to 40, 24 million women and girls who have experienced some form of female genital mutilation, though it's not a homogeneous phenomenon with disparities across regions. So this shows a lot of work needs to be done. And this year's meeting comes at a critical time when the challenge, when there are more challenges like COVID and conflicts threatening to reverse the years of progress in SRH. On a positive note, the pandemic has increased the attention on health systems, both in its struggles and its vital role. However, it has profound effects on the health system, unlike any other disaster uh, that was seen before. And the disruption in essential health services most likely will cause more diseases and disabilities than the COVID itself. And it has threatened to reverse the progress as we've had. And we all know it's not just the health crisis, uh, but also uh, affecting society with their social, economic, and political consequences. And since we are not yet seeing the end, there is a huge need of integration of COVID interventions to essential health care to, uh, uh, to ensure sustaining the gains made far, so far. And in addition, the current conflicts we're having as a country has also caused displacement and destruction of facilities, which also is another challenge. So for the way forward, we believe there is an urgent need to, be, to build resilient systems. And in that, to that effect, we have also prioritized uh, key areas in our strategy, like strengthening our primary healthcare system to improve equity and quality of SRH services, strengthening the leadership, governance, and the skill and motivation of health workforce, and improving data for evidence-based uh, decision making, as well as a sustainable healthcare financing. And there is a need to balance the COVID response with provision of essential services while we aggressively work on equitable access to vaccines. And I believe solidarity and partnership globally, but more importantly, enhancing our South-to-South -South cooperation is really critical as we have a lot more than we really know. Donors and development partners, I hope also will continue to allocate more resources, but support country sectors plans through one plan, one budget and one report framework. So our country strongly adopts the call to action of this conference and will make where we commit to make important progresses before the next year's session by establishing a strong national task force, identifying national focal persons to coordinate the institutionalizing and integration of the South to South and triangular cooperation and strengthening the PPD by facilitating uh, the mapping of centers of excellence and creating networks of professionals and joint research programs. So finally, I assure our sustained support to the ideas of the South, South and Triangular Cooperation, cooperation and the role of PPD and confirm Ethiopia's strong adoption of the call to action. I thank you. <laughs>